Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Sita Ramamurthy Pal and today we are going to be discussing about the nasal bone, its importance and its implications when it is absent. So the nasal bone is basically a bone that develops in the cartilaginous uh, mesenchyme of the nasal capsule and is seen actually between 9 to 10 weeks of pregnancy. Now, sonographically, it is seen as a white line below the fetal skin on the profile view. Most of the fetuses have a nasal bone, but sometimes it can be absent in some individuals in about 1-2% to 2 of population, especially in the Southeast Asian population, the Northeast parts of India, where they may tend to have an absent nasal bone physiologically. But over the years, nasal bone, absent nasal bone especially, has been a very significant marker for fetuses having trisomy 21, that is Down syndrome, or other chromosomal abnormalities. So assessment of the nasal bone has become part and parcel of our ultrasound scan, where we look for these features as well as other features which might tell us that this baby is at risk of having Down syndrome or trisomy 21. Now, as I said earlier, some fetuses normally don't have nasal bone, and if that is not seen in the first trimester, we tend to call them again at 16 weeks to see if there has been a delayed ossification and sometimes the nasal bone can be seen in the at 16 weeks. But if the nasal bone is still absent at 16 weeks or still absent even at the anatomy scan, then obviously it increases the risk of this baby having trisomy 21 to almost to a range of six times more than the normal pregnancy state, which is called the likelihood ratio. So in such cases, we tend to offer these women in a definitive test to make sure whether this baby is actually having Down syndrome or not. Having said that, because of the of the ratio of the uh, you know common uh, occurrence of this absent nasal bone, especially in the Indian population, if all the other features are normal and if the combined risk and the first trimester is also real low risk, if there is only an isolated nasal bone, we might have to think twice before you know whether we really need to offer an invasive test. And sometimes NIPT can help here. And if that is low risk, then we might avoid an invasive test for just an isolated hypoplastic nasal bone. So it is important to look for the nasal bone, its presence, its delayed ossification or absence. Isolated nasal bone, in, when there are no other features in the background of a low combined first trimester risk, may have to be individualized. But if there are other features, if there is high risk on combined FTS, then definite invasive diagnosis is essential to rule out chromosomal abnormalities, especially trisomy 21. Thank you.